It sounded straight off of a Nine Inch Nails album, honestly. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I am Molly and in this video I am going to be reacting to the album If I Can't Have Love, I Want Power by the American singer Halsey. Now Halsey is not an artist I'm all that familiar with. Back in 2015 when her first album Badlands came out, I did kind of get into the sound of that one. I liked a lot of the songs off of that album, but I've kind of just, I guess, drifted away from her music for whatever reason and I haven't really heard any stuff she's put out since her first album. And I recently learned that she had a new album coming out this year and what really intrigued me was it's produced by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross which if you're at all familiar with this channel you know that I am a big Nine Inch Nails fan and I love Nine Inch Nails music and I was just really intrigued. I know Halsey is kind of a more pop leaning artist and Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross do a lot more industrial rock cinematic stuff but I could definitely see there being an interesting fusion and I thought this would just be an interesting album to do a reaction to. All right so starting off with track one we have The Tradition. She's easy Definitely off to a very slow, melodic start here with the piano. I'm definitely picking up on a little bit of those Nine Inch Nails qualities to the sound of this one. For as minimalistic as this track is, it really builds up in a cool way. There's just a lot of layers going on, but they're very subtle. This part right here, like the kind of electronic-y sound going on behind the piano, that really is reminiscent of Nine Inch Nails for sure. Well, that was track one, The Tradition. That one was very restrained, but the layering on that one was fantastic. It just built up. There was a lot of power behind that song, but very restrained at the same time. Yeah, very intriguing track for sure. I really like the sound and the atmosphere of it. And I'm just going to move on to track two, which is Bells in Santa Fe. Those background noises, I just love stuff like this. The production on this one, oh man. All those little electronic like beeps going on. Kind of reminiscent of the Social Network soundtrack. Similar sound effects going on. I love how lyrically there's a lot going on with this track and I'm just like not even paying attention to the lyrics. I know I should be, but I'm too enthralled by this background stuff going on. I love how we went from that first track, which was mostly just piano, and this one's so much more heavily electronic sounding, but they work really well. Okay, that was a really interesting transition from track two into track three. But yeah, track two, Bells in Santa Fe, the production on that one was just something else. So layered, so nuanced. Again, a bit restrained up until the very end there, but so almost sinister sounding, um, like something's just building up. And then track three, we'll just continue on with this one. We have Easier Than Lying. All right, this one's a little bit more aggressive sounding, heavier. Oh, 
undivided hypertension. Yeah, this one's definitely bringing the energy. Oh, this part toward the end is pretty awesome. So that was track three, Easier Than Lying. Definitely bringing more energy and punchiness to it and almost bringing a sort of pop punk sound to this album, which I thought was pretty cool. Still behind all of that aggression and the more obvious in-your-face vocals, you could still hear like really cool background stuff going on. There were very subtle restrained moments at times and then the energy would just come back full force. And then moving on track four we have Lilith. This one just has a great beat to it. That was cool. The distortion on Corrupted. There's some very subtle background effects going on behind the vocals and the beat. It just brings like a slight eerie quality to this track. That was track four, Lilith. Definitely more simplistic sounding on the surface. It's behind the beat and the vocals though, there was definitely a lot of very subtle sound effects going on. And then you had some distortion on the vocals. And I'm just gonna move on to track five, Girl is a Gun. I'm not your daydream, I won't have your baby. <laughs> I just love the energy and the overall vibe of this album. It's like a little bit restrained, but it also has really punchy moments too. These background effects are so cool. This song almost just sounds like ping pong balls bouncing around in your head. Oh, that was a short little track, just over two minutes long. But track five, Girl is a Gun, that one was really, really entertaining to listen to. Just production wise, a really, really cool track. I liked how a little kind of all over the place it was. All the sound effects going on in the background too, compared with the vocals. Uh, yeah, that was just a fun track to listen to. Up next, we have track six, You Asked for This. kind of distorted, gruff, industrial sounding guitar going on in the background. That definitely sounds like Nine Inch Nails. This album is definitely less pop than I thought it would be. It definitely has pop influences and moments on it, but this is kind of a different direction from what I've known Halsey to do in the past, and I really like this sound a lot. This part right here reminds me of the end of We're In This Together on The Fragile. It sounds very similar. I love this, this instrumental part of it. It's so good. That was track six, You Asked For This. A little more restrained, but so much power and immensity to that song. It brought a lot of energy to it. It's interesting hearing these 
very Nine Inch Nails-esque sounds with a different singer. And it's amazing how just by changing up the vocals, you can change the tone of a track so well. Okay, and moving right along, we have track seven, Darling. Can't remember where I left my spine, carrying my body, hidden in the pages of the New York Times. All right, this one's very acoustic. We just have that acoustic guitar and the vocals, and that's pretty much it so far. All the little flowers gave me something to believe so. This definitely has a more vulnerable sound to it. A lot of the other tracks on this album have carried so much power. It's kind of nice to have a slightly more, like I said, vulnerable sounding song where she kind of sheds that image almost a little bit. Head fast toward the light. Head fast toward the light? Is she talking about like someone dying? And alive. That was track seven, Darling, very restrained, not really much production going on there at all. It was really just the acoustic guitar and Halsey's vocals. Like I said, I'm definitely gonna have to go back and listen to this album again to get more into the lyrics, but yeah, just a short little acoustic track on this album. And then moving on, we have track eight, which is 1121 or 1121. But yeah, let's give this one a listen. Again, with just building this track up with all these layers. Track 8, 1121. That one I really liked. You had all of the great build up into the chorus. The chorus was like my favorite part of that track, just how it brought so much energy to it. And then you had all of the electronic stuff going on too. And then you had the piano and of course Halsey's vocals. It just made a great mashup of all of that. And then I'll move on to track 9, which is called Honey. All right, and we're back to kind of this more almost pop punk sound. This track actually reminds me of the earlier Halsey songs I have heard. It's got a little bit more of a pop sound to it. That was track nine, Honey. Again, a slightly shorter one. Just kind of brought about a little more of that punchiness and energy again. And I'm just gonna move on to track 10, Whispers. I love this beat going on with all of the production stuff going on behind it. This track just sounds so clean and clear and it's got this really dark atmosphere to it. Ooh, that was track 10, Whispers. That is definitely a standout for me so far. I loved the vocal delivery on that one with the whispering and then kind of almost that like hip hop beat to it. Just the groove of that track paired with the really clean production, just fantastic. All right, and then moving on track 11, we have I Am Not A Woman, I Am A God. Again, with all the beats on this album, it's really cool. I just love the groove of tracks like these that have a little more energy on this album. And then you have all the fun electronic stuff going on too. This part definitely sounds like Nine Inch Nails. That 
little sound effect. It just sounds like an arcade game or something. That's what it's reminiscent of. I just love this chorus part. It's so awesome. <laughs> Track 11, I am not a woman, I'm a god. That one was fantastic. I loved the energetic delivery. I kind of liked that borderline hip hop beat to it, but then all of that fun electronic stuff going on too just added so much to that track. And moving on, we have track 12, The Lighthouse. There's so many different sounds going on with this album. Yeah, definitely a darker, grungier sound to this one. I love how heavy this guitar is. Again, with the beats, this album has so many good beats on it. Is that a different voice? Is it Halsey and Trent Reznor singing? That's almost what it sounds like. All this distortion. Track 12, The Lighthouse. That one, I loved the guitar on it, but what really stood out to me on that track was that little end bit. It sounded straight off of a Nine Inch Nails album, honestly, just with all the distortion and then the buildup, kind of that underlying tension-filled atmosphere that they create with their music. And then I'm just gonna move on to the final track on this album. We have track 13, Ya Auburny. I get Undertones of sadness when I think about cause the moon don't pick sides. Definitely a much more gentle track than that last one. I think we could live forever. See my youth in you. Halsey's vocals on this one are very smooth and melodic. Okay, we've got a little heaviness coming back now with that guitar. Take my life and take my soul, wrap me in a wedding ring, my youth in you. That part right there, in you, I really like her voice on that line. Very you. Huh, and that is how the album ends. That was track 13, Ya Auburny, if I'm saying that right. A very soft, melodic track to end this album on, but I think it actually makes sense in the context of the album. There's so much power and delivery on this, and for it to end on a very soft note like that, I think kind of makes sense. I loved Halsey's vocals on that one too. Very, very smooth and flowing. Yeah, just a nice little simplistic track to bring this album to a close. So that is going to wrap up my reaction to If I Can't Have Love, I Want Power by Halsey. This album actually impressed me more than I thought it would, and I guess I shouldn't be surprised because like I said, typically anything Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross produce or get their hands on in some sort of way, I usually end up loving. But the production on this album was just out of this world. I thought it was great. And paired with Halsey's vocals, it was a great combo that oddly works really well. Girl is a Gun is so fun to listen to. That one was amazing. I also loved Whispers. That one was very dark and menacing and, again, just loved the energy that it brought. Toward the end of the track, Lighthouse was also a standout. It reminded me so much of a Nine Inch Nails track. And the biggest standout on this album and my favorite track on it is the second one, Bells in Santa Fe. That track was amazing. The production on it was just something else. Definitely let me know in the comments if you have heard this album and what your thoughts on it are. And yeah, as usual, thank you all so much for watching. Stay tuned and I will see you in the next video.